Hi, I'm Marvin, and welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. And in this Workflow Wednesday, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Real Guide to make an implant model based off your treatment plan that you've done. So right now, I have this case up. I did a single implant planning for tooth number 30. I used a BioHorizon implant. So what we're going to do right now is we're pretty much just going to make an implant model that you can print out in your office or in your laboratory using a 3D printer to be able to fit, let's say, uh, any type of crown that you want um, or even kind of just see uh, how it's sitting on the tissue and everything when it comes to the implant. So um, this is just going to be how to make that model real fast that will be retrofitted for a digital lab analog to be put in from the provider, uh, from the implant provider that you're going to be using. So like I said right now, here's my plan. I have it as a BioHorizon. It is a 4.6 by 10.5 millimeter. Um, and again, all we're going to do is pretty much take this intraoral scan that we have, and we're going to make it into a model that is retrofitted to be able to put a uh, digital implant analog. So right now, as you see, um, again, implants already planned and everything. So what we're going to do is go straight to the uh, left side with all our tools, and we're going to go to the bottom where it says create model. Once you have uh, clicked on create model, of course, on the top, you can go ahead and choose what object it is that you're going to want to use. So for us, we only have one scan in here. But if you bring in multiple scans, like let's say one with like a wax up tooth on it, um, maybe one before extraction or anything like that, um, you can differentiate which model it is or which uh, scan you want to use to make this model. So just make sure that you have the right one selected, because um, if not, every step that you do is going to be done on the on the scans that uh, you may be not trying to use. So again, just make sure for us, we only have one. That's why when I press the drop down, it's only one um, scan that I can choose from. Here on the left is going to be just different things that you can uh, you can do and edit the model before moving forward to actually creating the lab analog hole for you. So right now, as you see, we can flip normal, simplify mesh. Um, right here, cut by. If there's any extra data that you really don't want on this scan, you can go ahead and cut that just by coming right here to cut area and left clicking and creating dots. And whatever is in that pink circle that you see, that's what's going to be deleted. So just like that, I'll come back down here to cut, press cut, and it'll take it away. You can do that um, realistically. The real reason to really go ahead and do that is sometimes the software just has an easier time in making the model. It doesn't take as long. Sometimes the softwares can have a hard time figuring out um, how you want the base of the model actually built based on these um, kind of scatter that's on the scans. So you can definitely go ahead and do that. If you don't, it really won't make that big of a deal. You might have a little bit of extra um, material like that sticking out on the model. So if you really want it to look clean, this is where you can come. And again, just get rid of these areas that you may not uh, necessarily need here on the scan. So again, I'm just uh, doing this to kind of show you how this tool works. I'm just left clicking creating this um, this line and coming around through the outside because again whatever is here on the inside of this pink circle or you know pink shape at all whatever is highlighted by this pink that's what's going to be deleted so you can go ahead and just press cut realistically everything else is kind of the same thing you can uh, straighten the boundaries and everything like that I really don't mess with uh, too much with the model realistically all I'm going to do is clean it up and just make it look a little smoother because it does give the software an easier time in actually creating the model so once you've gone ahead and you've uh, edited your model the best that you feel fit, you're going to go ahead and go to the bottom and press next step. And right here, you're going to be met with a couple of uh, settings that you can change. So you have your analog tolerance. So what this is, is it's going to be the space uh, of the hole in which you put the analog in. I would say never keep this at zero. Um, just because sometimes when you keep it at zero, it's such a perfect fit that it does... Um, uh, create a hard time and actually putting the analog in it's actually so perfect of a hole that um, it's a little too tight so usually I go from anywhere from 0 0.05 to 0 0.10 anywhere in between there it's not going to be so loose that the analog is going to move around or anything like that but it's also not going to be so tight that the analog can't just drop right in without having to use force and that's really what you want you don't want to have to sit there with like a little bit of a tool to like hammer it in you can crack the model you can uh mess you can dent the analog anything like that you should want the analog to kind of drop right in but of course you don't want it to move around or have too much clearance to uh kind of change the angle or anything like that so anywhere from 0 0.05 to 0 0.10 is going to be your kind of like sweet spot that you want to stay at. So again, I have it at 0 0.9. Um, I wouldn't go higher than like 0 0.10. If you do, 
I mean, I never have, so I don't want to say that that all of a sudden is going to cause problems. I just keep it at 0 0.05 to 0 0.10. I found it to be perfect. It slides right in, but it's also a perfect fit where it doesn't move or anything like that, especially because some analogs do come without screws. Some analogs you just place in the, in the um, hole itself. Um, but it doesn't have any type of screw to keep it in place. So you definitely don't want to make it too loose to where that one can move around. So like I said, anywhere from 0 0.05 to 0 0.10 is going to be perfect. So right now here at the bottom, we have uh, this little uh, um, toggle right here for shell. All this is going to be is if whether or not you want this to be hollowed out, I would always recommend to hollow it out because it does take less material from your printers when it is hollowed out um, to create the model. Of course, if it is a full solid model that is how your printer will make it and when doing that it just will take up more material we've learned that um doing these models a lot here at the laboratory and we notice that if we keep it closed it does take more material and of course more material does add up to more money uh, especially if this needs to be printed more than once maybe you want two sets three sets um it's just better to always make sure that you don't um you don't have it closed off um it's just a, a lot better for um managing how much material you use and then of course, auto adjusted model height. Um, this, uh, you can definitely have that on and it will just adjust this model height, but you can obviously come here too, to where it says ex uh, extrusion height. And this, you can also go ahead and edit it. Um, if you're gonna be doing a model like this, for example, where you're gonna be putting an implant analog, you're gonna want it to have uh, some length to it just because you are putting an analog in there and you don't want the analog to stick through the bottom or anything like that. Because when you set it on the table, again, if it's one without a screw, it will just push right up. So you wanna make sure that your base does go a little bit longer than that analog. So that's something that you can definitely check in the next uh, step. But here, I mean, I put it anywhere from eight to 10. Again, same thing with the whole um, uh, shell additive is that you just don't want it too tall because it will take more material to create. Uh, you don't need to make it any taller than um, than realistically going past the analog just because um, there's no there's really no need for it and again it will take up uh, more material then you have your shell thickness so what this is is that uh, kind of here at the bottom it's kind of how thick you want those walls to be so you can make them very thin so it's less of a less of a um, uh, less of a, a material that's going to be covering that hole. The only thing is that if you do that, it could become a little bit more fragile, uh, could break, especially like for us, for example, when we clean these, we use a power washer. So if it's a little too thin, um, it, our power washing can be so strong that it can actually even break it. So you don't want it to be um, too, uh, too uh, thin. So I keep it at 2.0. That's a pretty good uh, deal. Again, you can mess with it. So for example, if I come here, um, and I will show you on the next step kind of how it changes, but I have it at 2.0. But if I change it, for example, let's go up to right here, 4.4. So uh, we'll change it and I'll show you just the difference real fast. And then of course, kind of how you're looking at this from the top view, you can see how far this base extends. If you go ahead and put set extrude direction from view, you can do that and you'll kind of see how that goes away. So for example, if I look at it from this direction, and do that, it's gonna lean back like that. You don't want that. So look at it from a perfect occlusal view, maybe a little bit forward, uh, looking at the, the facial of the teeth, just like that, and it'll make it kind of go straight up and down. That's really what you want. You can reset it and you can restore the default settings. Um, again, that's just uh, if you feel like you made some changes and you didn't really like any of them, you liked how it was when it's, uh, when it's set by the computer uh, or by the software right away, you can go ahead and change that. But once you have everything set to your liking, go ahead and press next. And it should create the model. Again, sometimes this step can take a little bit longer if you leave too much of that data um, that I showed you guys in the beginning. So that's why sometimes I clean it off. But if I come right here to the bottom, you see how thick these walls are? That is because I set it to four millimeters. So if I go back real fast, and just don't change anything but the shell thickness from four back to where it was, which was two, and I go next step, you'll be able to see the difference. And this is just, again, wanting to show you guys how that tool works and the importance of it. Um, I do believe it should just stay at two. I think this is perfect. It's still very thick and won't break anything, but it's also not so wide that it closes it off. Um, it makes it a lot easier to clean in here and everything like that when you take this out. 
And then kind of what we were talking about on uh, the extension of this base, you'll see that the actual analog itself stops right there. You don't really want it any higher or any lower than that. Um, and again, right here, we didn't extend it too far up, so that's perfect. If I really wanted to nitpick a little bit and go back and bring it down just a little bit, I could, um, but I think that's perfect. Again, don't go too far up just because it does um, take more material every time you do that. It does make a print longer when you add this model if you've made it too tall. And then here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you can create this lab analog right here. So we have uh, two uh, settings for that. We have a top extrusion. So what that's gonna be is this kind of blue outline you see right here. If I go ahead and grab this meter and bring it up, you'll see that widen. Or if I bring it in, you'll actually see it go away a little bit less. What you wanna do is you just want it a little bit uh, wider than the actual analog itself. So if you notice here, let me bring my object list down. Right here, we have three that we can look at. We have the bottom extrusion, top, and analog. So the analog one is gonna show you the exact size of that hole that the analog needs. Just make sure those top extrusion, uh, extrusion itself, I apologize, um, that you just make sure that it's wider than that. Um, you don't want it too much thinner. You don't want it too much wider where it kind of takes away. I think uh, pretty much what uh, the computer has it based off um, is pretty much perfect. And then same thing with this bottom. So the reason why this is here is again, some of these analogs come with screws, some don't. So there will be a hole there at the bottom no matter what, even if it doesn't come with a screw, which is totally fine. Um, but I wouldn't make it too wide um, just because you, know, you don't want the analog to fall straight through. You can you know, pretty much create this whole hole that um, will take everything away and the analog will just fall through. So again, these two these settings, I would pretty much just keep what the software gives you. Uh, it, they do it perfect. Um, it's the perfect size for any screws if they have to go through. And it's also not too big when it comes to putting the analog in. So just make sure you keep that at what is there. If you wanna mess with it and kinda, and kinda see what works better for you, you definitely can. But I think what they give you right away will be perfectly fine. And then, of course, text options. So, of course, if you're printing this out in your laboratory or in your uh, practice and you have multiple cases that maybe you're doing at once and you want to be able to differentiate which goes where, um, you can obviously go ahead and add the patient's name. If you have, uh, for example, here we have PAN numbers that helps us differentiate where things go. We can go ahead and add the PAN number, whatever helps you there uh, in your facility to make sure that you can organize these models correctly. You can go ahead and do that. So for example, if I have here, and let's say the number is 222, I can go ahead and add the text, and I can go ahead and hover over where I wanna put it. I can also have it engraved or not, so I can have the number sticking out or engraved in the model. And then I can also generate the 3D text. So just like that, you can also change the size, the depth, and the spacing of it. So I want it to be higher, I, I mean, uh, wider I can. If I want the depth of the engraving to be there, I can go ahead and bring that up. And I can also change the spacing of the numbers between one another. Definitely do that too. So you can go ahead and add that wherever you feel fit. And then go ahead and press finalize. So just to show you guys, so here it is for your lab analog. I actually think that I might have missed something. So just to show you guys real fast, one more time. So what you also wanna do here is on the analog holes, make sure you press apply. It will then, of course, put in the holes and everything like that for you. So just go ahead and do that. Again, add your text. When I come to finalize, here it is. Just like that, it has, as you see, it even has these little ledges. So those, everything that, uh, pretty much how this hole is and the actual format of it is gonna be based off whatever uh, implant company you're using. Again, I'm using BioHorizon, so this is the shape of their analogs. So this is based off the library that is given to Real Guide from BioHorizon. And now if I go ahead and go to BioHorizon, they do sell these analogs for you. You can go ahead and purchase them, and then uh, they should fit right into this model. Um, again, if you want to extract this model from here, you're just gonna go right here to reports and export. And now any model that you made right here, it says export guide and model. So they actually export them individually. You can, I mean, uh, together, but individually, of course. You can go and export guide and model, 
find the directory in which you want to export it to, and then you can take it to any printer that you have as an STL and print it out. That's it for another Workflow Wednesdays. If you guys have any questions, please comment below, and we'll see you on the next one.